a massive update for Adobe After Effects just dropped and it's about to take your projects to a whole new level. As you might know, Adobe recently released an update allowing you to import 3D models in After Effects. I also made a video about it and concluded that it's a great addition, but it was still missing a few key features. And the biggest missing feature just got added. The ability to import animated 3D models. That's huge! Previously, if you wanted to add something like a dragon into your video, it would have looked pretty lifeless and static. But with this latest feature, you can make it look something like this. And that's exactly what we're going to create today. Now, you can of course use any footage you want, but if you want to follow along with the exact same footage as me, you can download it from the link in the description below. Once you've done that, we can open up After Effects and get started. All right, so here we are in the beta version of Adobe After Effects. Here in your Creative Cloud app, just select beta applications and download After Effects beta. And the first thing we're going to do is add a 3D camera tracker effect um, and check advanced detailed analysis so that if we import our 3D model later, it will stick to one place. And while After Effects is tracking the footage, we can already search for our 3D model. I got mine from Sketchfab. Here, the Demon Dragon. It's free to download and already animated, and I think it looks great. So just select Download Model, and then here, download the GATF version. And when we come back, we can see that After Effects already tracked our footage. And um, this right here looks pretty good. So we can just select a tracking dot right here. Um, I take this one, right click on it, and then just select Create Solid and Camera. And now we can see that it's tracked perfectly. Next, we can import our dragon. So just unzip the zip file and then drag the scene file right here in After Effects and then just import it in the timeline. We can call it Dragon right here and click OK. And now we can see our 3D model here at the top. So just move it down, maybe rotate a little bit. The anchor point is at the wrong place for this model. So just press Y and then move it up like this. Maybe a little bit more forward. And yes, now we can just move it around, maybe a little bit closer to the camera. But if we press play now, we can see that it still doesn't move. So like in the previous version of After Effects. But if we now go to the dragon layer, unfold it, then we see a new option right here, the animation options, just unfold it and under name, select flying or however it's called for your model. And if we now press play, we can see that our dragon is animated. Perfect, that's already working. As a next step, we can animate our dragon to fly into the distance. So first of all, maybe make him a little bit bigger so he seems a little more scary. And then just press P for the position, create a keyframe in the beginning and move the dragon right here um, out of frame and then go one frame further and drag him all the way into the distance and move this keyframe to the end. So if we press play now, we can see that it's already working, but we still need to fine tune it further to make it really look good. So go to the one view option right here and change it to two views. And the second window will pop up right next to it. And this window here is the top view. You can change it to whatever side you want, but I'm gonna leave it here as the top view. And with this view, we can just fine tune it a lot better. So maybe just select the first keyframe, right click on it, then keyframe interpolation, and change the spatial interpolation to continuous Bezier, or however you pronounce this, and click OK. And now you get this handle here at the bottom so that you can further fine tune your graph. Next, we can create a keyframe for the orientation, move to the end, and then maybe rotate it a little bit more, um, maybe make it straight or something, then move to the beginning and change it here. Before we're moving on with the next step, make sure that you're happy with your dragonfly path because once we're done with the next step, it's really hard to do changes. Okay, let's say I'm happy with this animation right here. So let's just go to the point where he flaps his wings. Um, that's right here for me. Because if dragon would really exist, they would always fly fast when they flap their wings and then gradually become slower until they flap their wings again and then they would become faster again. And that's exactly what we're going to add as well. So just go to the point where he flaps his wings and create a keyframe and then move on to the next time we have flaps his wings. 
and create another keyframe and here another one. Next we can open up the graph editor and select one of these keyframes right here and just move them down. And then we can do the same for the other ones. And now the dragon always gets slower the closer he is to the next keyframe. If you want to reduce the effect, you can also just select the keyframes here at the bottom and move them up like this. And like you can see, if I were now to change the end position of the dragon right here, it would only affect the area between this keyframe and this keyframe right here. And all of this in between would just not update. And that's why it was so important to get the file pass correct before. As the next step, we're going to light our dragon so that he just fits a lot better into the scene. To do it, I went to polyhaven.com and found this HDRI right here, which matches the lighting of our footage pretty well. So just select 4K HDR and download it right here. And then just drag it into the timeline and we can just disable it and move it to the bottom. Now to make this HDRI affect our 3D model, we need to create a new light. So right click, new, light, and select environment light right here. Click OK. And then here under source, we can just select our misty farm road. And there you go. It now looks a lot more realistic. I feel like the back of the dragon should be a lot brighter though. So just create a new spotlight. And then here in the left view, we can just move it above our dragon and turn the light down like this. Maybe still move it a little bit higher. And check the perspective from top view. And now we can just parent the light here to the dragon so that the lighting is consistent. The brightness is still way too low, so let's just increase it to 2000 or maybe 1000. And that looks a lot better. Now the only thing left to do is compositing, but we currently can't apply any effects to the dragon. So just duplicate it, turn it off and move it to the bottom. This duplicate is only for the light and then Select a dragon and press Ctrl Shift C to pre-compose it. Call it dragon and press OK. Um, and now we can apply any effect we want to the dragon, but it looks a lot worse than before. And that's because our cameras and lights all don't affect him anymore. We can easily change it though by just pressing this little button right here. And then everything is like before, but we can now apply any effect we want. So I'm just gonna start with the curves effect. And now we can just go in every channel and adjust it to match the dragon to the footage. But if you're struggling with that, you can also solo each channel. So here at the bottom, we can, for example, select the red channel and then just select the red curve and adjust it to match the dragon to the footage and then switch to the next channel and adjust this one as well. And once you're finished, you can just select RGB and see if it's better and still do some little adjustments to make it perfect. As the next step, I'm gonna add a plugin called Creates Light Wrap. And what this plugin does is just taking the background color and wrapping the light around our model, which makes it look so much more realistic. If you wanna use this plugin as well, you can download it for free. I'm gonna link it to you in the description down below. Just select your background layer right here and then blend with original, maybe 80%. And here you can really see how much it's improving our shot. As the next step, we want to add grain to our dragon. So just search for a match grain effect, select final output, and again, use the video as a source. And if I turn it on and off, you can really see how much of a difference it makes. If you want, you can also still adjust it right here. Maybe the size is a little bit too big, so I'm gonna scale it down, but really match it to your own footage. If we look at our dragon, we can see that he's so much sharper than our footage. So to change it, just add a fast box blur effect and change the radius to 0, 0,06 maybe, or even eight. Yeah, eight looks good. And the last effect that we need to add is motion blur. Unfortunately, we can't just tick the motion blur box here at the bottom. Maybe they will still add this in the future, but for now we need to do a workaround. So just add a pixel motion blur effect, set the samples to 16 and move it in front of every other effect. This effect only looks at the dragon as a 2D layer and not as a 3D layer, so it can have some mistakes, but I think for this shot it will totally work. And yeah, that's basically it. Maybe you could still adjust the curves effect to make it look even better, or maybe create an adjustment layer um, and with the Lumetri effect, do some color grading. Really, do whatever you want, have some fun with the scene, 
and then you should end up with a result quite similar to this. Now this feature is great, but it's still missing a lot to replace actual 3D software. So if you want to see how it compares to Blender, then watch this video here. I recreated the same shots in both programs so that you can choose the right software for you.